On November 10th, 1969, the children's series Sesame Street premiered on PBS in the United States. It became incredibly popular, and soon its influence started to reach beyond America's borders. Over the years, a large number of international co-productions of Sesame Street has been produced. This video will focus on just one such co-production, the Norwegian Sesam Station. In 1987, the head of programming for the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, NRK, at the time Ada Haug, approached the production company for Sesame Street, the children's television workshop, about the possibility of making a Norwegian version of Sesame Street. By 1989, an agreement had been made. Ada Haug appointed producers Grete Heyen and Hermann Gran to head the series, along with writer Eivind Scheie and told them to make the show as Norwegian as possible. Unlike most international versions of Sesame Street, it was decided that the Norwegian show would not be set in a city street, but rather a small train station near an unnamed Norwegian town. This could be mostly to keep the name similar to Sesame Street. The Norwegian word gata would not fit as well into the title as station, the Norwegian word for station. But the change also served to be more inclusive to a larger number of Norwegian children. Norway is quite large geographically, but with a relatively small population scattered over the entire country. So whereas a lot of American kids could recognize their own neighborhood in Sesame Street, most Norwegian kids' neighborhoods looked entirely different. I myself grew up in Norway's second largest city, and I have never lived anywhere even slightly similar to Sesame Street. So, what could all these Norwegian children recognize? Well, Norway is a very mountainous country, with small communities popping up in valleys and fjords all over the country. There's roads between these communities, of course, and transport by air and sea. But Norway's extensive railway system, with its 696 tunnels and its 2760 bridges, is an important part of the country's infrastructure. Most communities, even the smaller ones, had a train station. So the idea of Sesam Station was conceived. A train station run by both humans and Muppets. <laughs> both NRK and the NSB Railway Company was funded by the Norwegian government. So NSB provided Lørenskog Station in Akershus as the outdoor set for the show's train station. As well as two modified EL10 train engines. The station and train engines were repainted in bright cheerful colors, and a small clock tower was erected on the side of the station, serving as a lookout post for one of the characters. NSB also painted two of their running passenger trains in the Sesam station colors, to the delight of children who spotted them all over the country. At one point, the whole Sesam station production crew had to visit New York to observe the production of Sesame Street itself. This to adhere to CTW's guidelines that the sets and costumes had to fit in with the styles of the original program. CTW also provided three original Muppets for Sesam Station. These would have to be shipped back to New York whenever they needed to be cleaned, because the mechanism used to operate them was confidential. Before production could start on the first series of Sesam Station, the children's television workshop sent puppeteer and puppet maker Kermit Love to Norway in June of 1990, so that he could train the Norwegian puppeteers. The three original Muppets were Alpha, who runs the station kiosk, Bjarne Betjent, who runs the ticket booth, and Max Mekker, the train station mechanic. Alpha was the only female Muppet out of the three, and played by Hanne Dahle. Alpha liked to read and write, both books and letters to and from her many pen pals from around the globe. <laughs> Bjarne Betjent was a pink and rather human looking hand puppet, played by Osman Husar. Bjarne was more pessimistic than the other Sesam Station Muppets, and had some irrational fears and worries. <gasps> Max Mekka was the biggest of the characters, being the only walk-around Muppet among the cast, and was played by Geir Børresen. Max, being the mechanic, was naturally good at fixing things. Max Mekka, Mekka Max. 
<laughs> but his size also made him the muscle of the station, leaving him in charge of loading and unloading luggage and cargo. Rounding out the cast were two human characters, Station Master U Tiedemann and Leonora Dorothea Dahl. Station Master U Tiedemann was an older, grandpa-like character and was played by Svera Holm, who was a famous Norwegian comedic actor, most known for his 14 film stint as bank robber Benny Fransen in the Norwegian Olsenbanden series between 1969 and 1999. Leonora Dorothea Dahl, played by Cecil Ryan, was formerly a world-famous singer but she settled down at Sesam Station as Tiedemann's second-in-command. She still loved to sing and would often initiate musical numbers with the other characters. The show premiered on NRK on the 25th of February 1991, to massive critical success and a large audience. That same year, Ada Haug, the program director who initiated the creation of Sesam Station in 1987, changed position to be in charge of programming for young children, in conjunction with the premiere of Sesam Station. She would stay in that position until she retired in 1998. Alongside the original Norwegian train station segments, the show also featured dubbed clips from Sesame Street. Voice actor Harald Mele was responsible for dubbing most of the Norwegian voices for the American characters. Some of the most popular recurring Sesame Street characters were Ernie and Bert, Grover, Cookie Monster and Kermit the Frog. Kermit Frost, but the animated pinball number count segments also featured regularly. Sesam Station was so popular that in August of 1991, Lørenskog train station was modified once again. This time, changes were made so that visiting kids could walk around inside the station. Kindergarten classes could take train trips to Sesam Station from Oslo, and sometimes they would even be met by actors from the show, Max Mecker, or even full body walk around versions of the hand puppet characters. NRK's original plan was to produce 77 episodes of Sesam Station, but the program proved so successful that they entered into a new contract with CTW that would allow and require them to produce the show until 2001. But the original writer of the show, Eivind Shaya, only had a contract for the first 77 episodes and decided to leave the show after his contract ran out. There would be many different writers to fill his shoes over the course of the next few years. Some of them famous Norwegian authors like Unni Lindell and Anne B. Ragde. I am afraid of forfatter som skriver om dere fra Sesam station. Ja, men det er så rart da vet, vet du liksom hele tiden hva jeg skal si da. Over the course of the show, viewership eventually declined, although the show never became outright unpopular. In an attempt to engage a new batch of young viewers, the show introduced a new original Muppet to the cast. She hatched from an egg that had been left on a train, and took the name P. P looked like a red version of Alpha, but was also reminiscent of Elmo in that she was a toddler Muppet. In 1998, it was decided that Sesam Station had run its course on NRK and would be retired. NRK was still under contract with CTW to produce the series until 2001, but they decided to buy their way out of the contract instead of fulfilling it. The exact amount that had to be paid is unknown, but it was stated in an interview that NRK spent more on getting out of that contract than they saved on not having to produce the remaining episodes. The last new episode aired in the year 2000, but the show continued to air as reruns until 2004, after which NRK lost all remaining rights to show the footage. NRK would later negotiate a deal with Sesame Workshop in 2016, making four episodes of Sesame Station available on NRK's web TV platform. But most of the other 239 episodes of the show is completely unavailable, with only a few having been released on VHS in the 90s, and a Christmas advent calendar show having been released on DVD. The show has never been made available as a full DVD box set, despite the potentially large amount of money NRK and Sesame Workshop could make if they were able to come to a reasonable agreement with each other about such a product. Nostalgia is easy to sell to people, 
There are many Norwegians who grew up with Sesam Station in the 90s, and many of them would now jump at the opportunity of introducing the show to their own children. But even if just for archival purposes, I think the full run of the show should be made more available. Sesam Station is an important part of Norway's pop cultural history, and it is baffling that such a small part of it is available to us. But I actually think we have a fair chance of changing that. If we can get this video in front of the right people, at both the Norwegian and the American sides of things, maybe they'll try to work something out. They certainly won't do anything without knowing that there's a demand for it. So please help me get this video seen by as many people as possible, either by sharing it with friends and on social media, or by liking, commenting and subscribing, which will cause YouTube to recommend the video to more people. Together, maybe we can free Sesam Station from its copyright prison. Thanks for watching.